Hello everybody. Nice to see each other again. Um, last time, uh, that's only a few days ago, the 7th of March, I talked about uh, why Iran and Italy are you know, much infected by coronavirus than many other countries. Actually, uh, with the latest statistic, it says that Italy is the most affected after China. And Italy has, well, I don't know, maybe 60 million people. Huh? It's quite a lot. And Iran has uh, also a very high uh, number of uh, infected, but they have uh, also many uh, death cases, also Italy. Now, what I want to add today is, actually it's not only Iran and Italy. And I, I also mentioned that these two countries have something in common, and that is they have a very strong tie with People's Republic of China. A lot of economic exchange, a lot of cultural exchange, and with the, in the case of Iran, also a lot of military exchange. Yeah? And both countries have, uh, uh, in the recent years, uh, been driving a kind of uh, uh, politically very friendly politics uh, uh, towards Beijing regime. Yeah? Iran, everybody knows, but also Italy. Yeah? Compared to many other European countries, they are probably at the forefront. You know, they are the ones who signed this uh, One Belt, One Road uh, project uh, with China. Now, there are also other countries, like, for example, South Korea, also have a high number of infected. And South Korea, Politically, because of uh, national security, they try to stay closer to the U.S. and not to China. But economically, they are very close to China, a lot of business, doing a lot of business. And, and uh, they also have been driven a kind of very uh, uh, friendly politics towards the Communist Party of China. And they have also a high number of infections. That's uh, interesting. And Probably uh, some other countries too. I mean, we don't go through every country, but quite a lot. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, if we look at countries who now are no longer that uh, friendly to the regime in Beijing, uh, such as USA, such as Taiwan, and Taiwan is interesting because Taiwan is very close. Uh, to China, and uh, a lot of uh, people in, in Taiwan and, and in, in, in mainland China have contact with each other. But Taiwan has, has not many infected. It's something like 45 people, I think. Yeah? Very low, extremely low. And Taiwan, you all know, has been uh, quite uh, anti-communist, right? Uh, I mean, uh, the, the recent uh, huge uh, victory of the Taiwan president in the last election. It was not a vote just for voting that uh, president. It was actually a, a kind of referendum on CCP, a vote for President Tsai Ing-wen, which the Communist Party loved to kick her out. Yeah? And so a vote to her, meaning a vote to say no to CCP. And Taiwan experienced a record high number of votes saying no to CCP. A huge, huge, absolute majority for, for, for Tsai Ing-wen president. Now, <clears throat> so this is interesting. Yeah? And actually, also interesting is Hong Kong actually also suffered relatively little from coronavirus. And you guys know what happened with Hong Kong the last year, in 2019, right? It's a huge protest movement against CCP. Uh, on the surface, only against this uh, extradition law, but actually, the whole movement is a movement to say no to CCP. So, and because it's, again, absolute majority of Hong Kong people say no to CCP, and, funny enough, they also get unusually low infected uh, number of people. So what I'm trying to say is maybe there is some correlation between uh, epidemic, you know, big plagues and, and political situation, social situation. Yeah? Uh, because if we study in the, in the past, in history, I mean, epidemic is nothing new, also in the, in the past. Yeah? Uh, you have, for example, in, in Europe, uh, 
the ancient, already in the time of ancient Greeks, yeah, the kingdom of uh, Athens suffered from a huge plague. That was something 400 years before Christ already. Uh, if I'm not wrong, from uh, 430 to 427 before Christ, in three years' time, uh, people in Athens suffered from a tremendous plague and it killed half of the population. Half of the population, which is a hell of a lot of people. Now, why I say there may be some cool relationship to political situation. So what, what sort of political situation in that time in ancient Greeks, in, in Athens? Well, uh, again, widely spread corruption, widely spread decadence. Yeah? Uh, people only, I mean the people in power, they only think about how to enjoy life and, and they have uh, all sort of uh, almost, uh, as I would say, sick way of enjoying life, uh, such as uh, very irregular and very uh, absurd uh, sexual uh, uh, activity uh, in, that, uh, in that time of uh, Athens. So uh, it was again also a kind of time of chaos, time of evil. And the, the plague came and killed a lot of people. In the uh, Roman Empire, something similar happened. So, you know, you all have heard about the Emperor Nero. Yeah, um, Emperor Nero, he started sometime uh, after, after Christ. Yeah, uh, I think it's actually only 100 years af after Christ. Yeah, and Nero, he hated the Christians. So he persecuted Christians, you know, killing many Christians, feeding the Christians. The, the lions with the uh, living Christian still alive, yeah? Terrible. And that time of persecution, yeah, it was a really, a, really a, a brutal and cruel persecution uh, during a long, long time. So four plagues visited the old Roman Empire, Roman Empire and killed many, many people, including Emperor Nero himself, he also died in uh, uh, the same uh, plague. Yeah? So the powerful uh, uh, Roman Empire went down because of these plagues. Several, it was four times, one wave after another. And then came the Emperor Justinian and he tried to, so to say, rebuild the empire again and be strong again, but failed. And gradually Roman Empire uh, vanished. Yeah? So it's interesting, but Christianity did not vanish. The Roman Empire vanished, but Christianity still exists today. So that is something that we should actually do some thinking on. Uh, is it because uh, we, the scientists and the medical scientists they cannot find out all the explanation why we get plagues, why we get epidemic. Yeah? It's not enough to look at it pure, so-called scientifically. We have to look at it maybe philosophically, spiritually. Yeah? There are many, many relationships, many co-relationship that they may not be visible, but they are there. And I think we better be open-minded and think about that. And this is nothing special with Europe. In China, the same thing. At the end of uh, uh, Eastern Han Dynasty, it was also a big place. And tens of millions of people died. Uh, same thing at the end of Ming Dynasty. Again, you know, in Chinese history, almost every dynasty, at the end of the dynasty, then the, 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 the rulers get corrupted, decadent, you know, and, and became very uh, brutal, very suppressive, yeah? and they don't listen to people anymore. Uh, they just try to you know, use their uh, violence, use their force uh, to, to, to achieve what they want to achieve. Uh, I remember in, in Ming Dynasty at the end, uh, uh, the last emperor, Chung Zheng, he was, he was so desperate 
Uh, so the whole day he only think about what shall I do to keep my power? And he started to mistrust, I remember, everybody in the court, uh, in, the, in the government. So at last, he only believed in himself and he believed in his uh, secret police. And the secret police was his strongest weapon or strongest tool to control his people. You know, it really sounds something similar for what we have today. Yeah? And in this moment, uh, the Manchurian came and tried to conquer China. And while they were fighting with the Manchurian, then came the plague, came a big epidemic and killed a lot, a lot of people. And interesting is, almost only Chinese died. I mean the Han Chinese and not the Manchurians. It's very interesting from the Qing dynasty. Yeah? Or they, they are going to build the Qing dynasty. So anyway, uh, we have really to be uh, humble. Yeah? We must learn from history. Maybe there is a correlation between on one side uh, 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 epidemic and the other side uh, the situation uh, in uh, politics, in moral, uh, how corrupt it is, how, uh, how much tyranny, how much suppression and corruption and all this. Yeah? So th there may be a kind of correlation. It looked like that. So now coming back to today's situation. The situation today in mainland reminds us a lot what was the situation at the end of Ming Dynasty where the emperor, you know, was very desperate to keep his power, to keep his own position. You know, something in common is the last emperor of, of, of Ming Dynasty, he, he put the highest priority is in his thinking, in his uh, uh, governing. Whatever is good to keep my power, I go for it. So, for him, the first thing he, he think about is not how shall I do so that I save most people's life. That was not the first priority. They may claim it, and like we are experiencing today, you know, if you look at the official propaganda from People's Republic of China, then you learn, wow, our government has been fantastic. Only China, only Chinese government can do such a great thing uh, to stop the coronavirus and to save so many people's lives. And you know, the whole world should thank China. What they did not tell you or what they don't tell you is, it was they using their dictatorship, their totalitarian system, so that they could keep information secret, yeah? for a long time and for a wide area. It was they keeping secret about coronavirus for maybe 50 days, according to my uh, counting. Yeah? 50 days long. And in these 50 days, million and million of infected Chinese travel all over the world. So that caused coronavirus epidemic become a pandemic. And now they turn it around, exactly like what they did 17 years ago with SARS, where they also, in the beginning, kept secret, and when they could not keep secret anymore because the whole thing spread everywhere, then they turn around and say they are the hero who, are, who have been the best in fighting the virus. Today, the same thing. So, be careful. You know, all this nice talking, I always say, you know, I always try to remind myself what Lao Tzu for 2,500 years ago said. Beautiful words are not trustworthy. Trustworthy words are not beautiful. So, my dear friends, be independent in thinking. Don't, you know, don't trust propaganda from CCP. Thank you for listening and watching. And if you like it, don't forget, subscribe, share and like. Thank you. Bye-bye.